Right, people, let's dig in. The Wall Street Journal's article, rubbishing that UAP are real, or as they're claiming the US government has never retrieved non-human technology, is causing quite a stir. The Wall Street Journal published a story entitled The Pentagon Disinformation That Fueled America's UFO Mythology. It's one of the daffiest, wackiest attempts ever by the national security state to explain away the growing evidence for the mystery of anomalous phenomena that is now being far more frequently reported in our skies. The Wall Street Journal just released an article called The Pentagon Disinformation That Fueled America's UFO Mythology that truly takes the cake. In summary, this article says that UFOs are entirely explained by two things. Electromagnetic pulses, or EMPs, that the American government secretly decided to use on our own nuclear missiles and Air Force hazing rituals. Fair enough, guys. But in fact, the Wall Street Journal are actually making a good point. Because there is a military physics technology that has been kept secret by blaming it on UFOs. But hang on, that's not the big picture. Because that secret technology was not the cause of the shutdown of the Malmstrong ICBM missile silo. And read my lips before you start typing. UAP are a real phenomenon. Non-human intelligence exists and is present here on planet Earth. So what am I saying? Well, I'm saying that both the Wall Street Journal and the UFO community are ignoring the facts. Facts about UAP hiding in plain sight. In this video, I'll try and explain what's going on and convince you that both the Wall Street Journal and the UFO community have got it wrong. Okay, I hope I've got your attention because for over 20 years, I've been researching military physics. Ever since the blackboard equation E equals MC squared was turned into an atomic bomb, the military has tried to keep secret two massive facts about nuclear weapons. Firstly, they attract non-human intelligence. And secondly, it's not the blast from an atomic bomb that kills you, it's the massive pulse of energy that is released that is the true killer. Atom bombs turn matter into energy, lots of energy, both ionizing destructive wavelengths and non-ionizing frequencies. It's that burst of energy that kills all living creatures and fries all electronics. The blast from the expanding shockwave is only a terrible side effect of the pulse that has already killed you. And these weapons attract non-human intelligence. Maybe a plasma energy-based life form that understands advanced physics because they live in that realm. From the very first day of the Trinity test in New Mexico, aliens were present, witnessing us opening Pandora's box, unleashing energy like their life form. Ever since that day, we are being carefully watched. We are being observed. Nukes in all forms summon UAP. There are hundreds of reports of UAP over nuclear sites. 
bomb tests, ICBM nuclear silos, physics labs, and even nuclear power stations. Non-human intelligence is attracted to those special places, probably because they exist in a high energy state, a realm of plasma, of ionization, of energy. But we kept exploding nuclear bombs, testing the effects of these pulses as an energy weapon. This starfish prime test over the Pacific Ocean probably ended atmospheric tests. It exceeded its expectations, knocking out power grids in Hawaii. So atmospheric nuclear tests were banned. But that didn't dampen the desire to make a massive directed energy pulse weapon. The question after the atmospheric ban was, was there a way of making a non-nuclear EMP weapon? That's the link and the fact that the Wall Street Journal actually got correct. But in my humble opinion, that's only half the story. Sure, non-nuclear EMP weapons were being designed. Testing even probably occurred near the Malmstrom range. But every time we tested non-nuclear EMP, UAP turned up. They are observing us. They are probing our knowledge. And as we discovered in the ICBM missile silo, they have control over our weapons because they live in a high energy physics realm. Let me make this really clear. What Robert Salas witnessed inside his ICBM missile silo was not a human EMP test. It was probably non-human intelligence attracted to our weapon systems. We made them appear. That, folks, is the missing link between the debunking Wall Street Journal and the UFO community. I'm going to repeat myself. We make them appear. So with that grand statement, how does it work? Well, first off, what exactly is EMP? An electromagnetic pulse is a burst of electromagnetic radiation that can disrupt electronic devices and electronic signals. Think of it as a giant wave that can fry circuits and knock out power grids. When a nuclear bomb detonates, it not only releases an immense amount of energy in the form of heat and blast, but also generates a powerful EMP. This occurs due to gamma rays interacting with the atmosphere, which creates a cascade of charged particles, a vast amount of free radical electrons in the sky, desperately trying to get to the ground, trying to get earthed. There are three components of nuclear EMP. E1, a fast pulse that can disrupt electronics, E2, similar to lighting, and that affects power lines. And E3, a slower pulse that can damage power grids over a wide area. Amazingly powerful weapons, but hang on. Nuclear EMP weapons um, have been banned. To address this challenge, scientists and military engineers turn to non-nuclear EMP devices. These devices can generate the same massive electromagnetic pulses. One common method involves a rapid discharge of energy from capacitors. This allows for a quick, focused pulse that can disable electronics at a distance without the massive destruction of a nuclear bomb. The implications of non-nuclear EMP technology are significant. Military applications include disabling enemy communications and weapon systems and wiping out power and communication grids. An ultimate weapon like that needed to be built and needed to be tested. Just imagine how powerful a non-nuclear EMP weapon would be to halt in their tracks any invasion of Western Europe by the Soviet Union. Imagine building a weapon that could fire an EMP pulse from Finland to France. A weapon large enough to win a war. 
That's what I think was built here. Cobra mist. A non-nuclear EMP on Britain's east coast, pointing at the countries the Soviets might choose to invade Western Europe. So let's look at the proof that Cobra mist was actually a non-nuclear EMP weapon. Well, to make it work, you have to have three things. Number one, a local, extraordinarily big power source. Number two, a capacitor bank, Marx generators, to actually produce the pulse. And number three, a specially designed antenna system that can transmit and steer the pulse to their target. Folks, Cobra Mist had all three. Okay, I've talked enough. In part two of this video series, I'll tell you how it worked and how every time Cobra Mist was turned on and tested, UAP appeared over Suffolk and ultimately its demise, how the Soviet Union fatally compromised Cobra Mist. And an amazing story, how the British MOD accidentally revealed the true nature of Cobra Mist to the British press. What I've said today connects two camps, the debunkers and the believers, because both are correct and both are wrong. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and get subscribed for part two. How UFOs were evoked over Suffolk. The truth is out there.